Oh, yo, it's Pep Talk UK, it's Frankie B, repping the Pep Talk boys, and I'm joined by trainer Don Charles. How you doing? I'm doing very well, and I would say, because I'm very courteous, how are you doing? I am doing magnifique, as they say, a bit of my French coming through. Now, Don, uh, I need to get straight to it. Now, you've had a short time so far um, in sort of a, a whole coalition, this new team, Yourself, Derek Chisora, David Hay. I still scratch myself about this new team. How's it going so far? Um, do you know what? Like um, we've spoken privately, and I, I told you my my feelings regarding the the, the, the joint um, uh, working relationship with Mr. Hay. Um, it was a shock to me in the sense that obviously obviously we have a history um, with Mr. David Hay. Um, it just shows you how things change in life, you know. I personally uh, wouldn't have expected that to be the case, what's happened us working together with him. Um, when Derek first um, mentioned it to me, I rejected it instantaneously. I, said, I had a guy at him, in fact. I said, what are you thinking? Are you out of, out of your mind? And it took me literally two minutes to uh, digest it after the shock, the initial shock, and to hang on and say, you know, this could actually be a very uh, 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 genius move uh, on in Derek's uh, uh, web Derek, regarding Derek, you know, and it's a masterstroke. And the question was whether Mr. Hay was going to agree or would agree to do it, you know. And obviously, he thought about it. And uh, Derek came back and said, "Yeah, we've spoken with a meeting, and uh, he's willing to to, to 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 do it." And here we are. Um, how many weeks ago? Now it's uh, been at least uh, four or five weeks. We're into that relationship and it's something hundred percent said to you and I'm a good judge of character I'm a good because of my age I've been around for ages I'm able to suss things out straight away it's my duty because I'm very protective of all my fighters especially where Derek Chisora is concerned because it's my first fighter that I've worked with that put me on the map as a trainer so obviously I'm very very protective um, anything uh, to do with him um, so I've checked it out it is what he says on the tin. David Hayes, as straight as they come, he says it how it is. He, uh, I can also say that Derek has only ever had one. This is Derek Chisora's second manager in 14 years, in the sense that he's never been managed. Yeah, the only time he came remotely close to being managed properly is when I introduced him to Steve Goodwin, who, for the last two years, that's who's been doing the managerial uh, duties for Derek Chisora and Steve did a great job and we thank him uh, for, his, for what he did for Derek but what Mr Hay is providing for Derek is a 360 degree management, total management yeah so he oversees all aspects of Derek Chisora's boxing career um, he's got staff, he's got a wicked infrastructure of David Hay um, he brings a lot to the table. It's not just, you know, a lot of people run around saying we're managers, we're managers. It's a word. Um, but what do you actually do for that fighter? Now, I can categorically say to you, David Hay has a fantastic infrastructure to facilitate, to manage the service for the boxer in every capacity. Anything that boxer needs, he has in abundance. And I can say it publicly because it is what it, what it is. Um, he, he um, I'm really happy, and Derek is very happy uh, 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 being managed by, by, by Mr. Hay. As bizarre as it may appear to the public because of the history that we have, <laughs> the public can only judge you based on what, what you portray, what, how, the only, uh, what you demonstrate either in the past. If you look at it, it, it kind of, I'm still having people having digs at me on the internet. Yeah, I'm only the coach saying that we've sold out we know no it's not about <laughs> selling that it's about what's do, what, doing what's right for your career yeah and like i said i didn't see it coming it's not something me and derek sat down and said you know what we need the manager oh yeah let's go and get david no derek being derek he thought about it obviously yeah and hence why i was really shocked when he first um, said it to me that that's what he was thinking what do i think i rejected it like i said initially then when i embraced it um i thought hang on i said it's actually a master stroke if it, it works and it's working at that point was there some form of apology from david hay years on or did you receive that a long time ago 
We've we've spoken. It's it's a private matter. We've spoken on regarding the past. You know what? You move on in life. You know. Um, don't carry no grudge. It was spare at the moment. What happened? You know. It happened. It was. You know. There's always a, a positive out of every negative. Yeah. I can publicly actually say because I've never actually said this, so you're getting it exclusive. Right. The most money I've been paid as a trainer is through being involved in that whole madness, the fight yeah. that happened between Dexter Zora and David Hay. I earned the most money as a trainer from that fight. Guess what? Coincidentally, Mr. Hay, how many years later, come back into our lives. I'm about to make, again, the most money I'm going to make as a trainer through Mr. Hay being involved. So, from every negative, there's a positive. You know, so if you look, if I can tell that to the uh, public, yeah, look at it, you know, it's, how ironic is that, okay, and it's got to be good for us, for Derek, for me, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've still got visions of uh, the words, he glassed me, he glassed me, and also as well, the trap was sp swinging about, it, it really is amazing that you, you could come together, it just goes to show that, you know what, maturity uh, should stand f first and foremost. Yeah, life, you know? listen. We're not exempt yet. The world goes to war, world war. We have civil wars, we have domestic wars. And in most cases, people make up. Unfortunately, blood is spilled before peace comes. Yeah, we had what we had. Yeah, that's done with. There's peace at the end of it. And it's, as long as it ends up in a positive uh, uh, way, which it has, this is positive. So we should embrace it, it's positive. I know the public wanna see blood. Yeah, because they're bloodthirsty. You're bloodsuckers. Yeah, well, there ain't gonna be any more blood spilled. Yeah, we've made up, we've embraced, and we've moved on. We've, we've turned the negative in, into a positive. That's gonna be good, surely. What about has there been any um, formula like teething problems in this new relationship with David Hay, Chizuru, and yourself? Has there been any differences initially, or has it been smooth sailing straight away? Because of the experience that we already have, we remember we've done this the whole circuit. We Derek has fought for world titles, we didn't succeed. We've done European circuit, we Derek was European champion, British champion. He's won every title there is to win except for the world title. So we bring a lot to the table. And Mr. Hay has already done all those. He was successful in his quest. He became a two-time world champion in two different weight categories. Okay? So all the mistakes he, he made whilst coming through to in, with his journey, okay? We've made loads of mistakes also, okay? So collectively, all that experience that we he brings and we bring yeah right? we're not novices so we know what's wrong and what's right so that's why the marriage is instantaneous it's working because you've got two experienced partners here okay and it's yeah it's it's really working harmoniously it's, it's really um it couldn't be better you know because again like i said we're all matured we've all had um, our experience in boxing we're not inexperienced coming to an experienced outfit so we know wrong and right so everything appears to be in place of everything uh, it's only adding to what we have already okay what mr hay brings which is a lot adds to what we already have so it's a, it's a winning combination and what do you make of like dillian white he's obviously criticized the whole relationship is it is isn't that i don't expect him to praise it i don't expect him to embrace it um but he may criticize it but behind I know if the roles was reversed, I'm a very honest man, I'd be very concerned, I'm very troubled. If, if let's say, for instance, May, Mr. Hale teamed up with Team, uh, team Dylan White, I'd be pretty concerned, yeah? Because he knows deep down, he may criticize it publicly, deep down he knows, because he knows David Hay, he knows he used to spar with David Hay, he knows the type of person David Hay is, and yeah, if I was in his shoes, I'd be, stop criticizing us, that worrying and he'd be, he's a very worried man in my opinion I if, mean, he, if he's not he should be uh, i mean i've seen uh, De uh, Derek Chisora around um, at the press conference the other week mm -hmm. he seems a lot more you know calmer and at peace um it has the old del boy gone and is this a new change and is this a new man that's going to go in um, this, the rematch in a calculated fashion i'm not going to be falling to the cliche of saying there's a new reborn no no Derek Chisora is Derek Chisora uh, the, the, you know, um, he's there. He's more experienced. He's more matured. Um, he's thinks before he speaks. He's it, it, 
there's don't remember that you are the company you keep yeah any wrong Derek has done in the past I am there as a father figure as a trainer first and foremost the father figure I'm his uncle I'm his friend I'm everything in one so uh, if he does any wrong in public trust me when it, whether it's a press conference and he gets addressed by me I pull him up his mother never mind me when he gets home his mother you know has a go at him so you know any changes you may see on that because he's been somebody has to pull him up and say hey don't do that again don't say that didn't that that doesn't um, sound right it didn't come across right so you know it, i'm sure every sportsman have, has the same thing if people who love you care for you they care about how you appear how you represent them you're not just representing yourself you're representing a whole uh, lot of people fans you he has fans yeah he doesn't want to be perceived as this thug he's been portrayed as Look, I'm not a hypocrite. People sometimes perceive him like of the actions. I'm not for a minute saying that he's an angel who's been persecuted. No, he's given people reasons to to uh, to try and trash him, trash talk him. So moving on to uh, another one of your fighters, Frank Buglioni. Excuse my Italian. The G is silent. Oh wow! You know, I'm still I'm still getting through my Italian lessons, you know, week by week. Yeah, so. the G in Bullioni is silent, so it, the G don't. It's not Bugli, it's Bullioni. 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 There you go. I've got it. I've got it. You know, A star for me, eh? Mm. So he, he fights next next weekend. Uh, yes, um, we. He has a fight in Monaco on the twenty fourth of uh, of this month, uh, a week tomorrow. Um, so we've got to go to Monaco and demonstrate. The caliber of uh, fighter from Bulioni is because we fell, as you know, we fell short um, with yes, Callum, Callum against Johnson, Johnson yeah. for the unification of British Titan Commonwealth. Look at that, Callum, the winner went on to fight um, for a world title. Baterbia. Yeah, and he gave a bloody good account of himself. Yeah, he did. He could he could have finished him. He could have stuck on him, you know. And I wish he did because we were hoping that he'd win, and hopefully, uh, we get ourselves back up to. Uh, get a return match with him by fighting for a world title, you know, because the fight was ended, concluded prematurely. No complaints. The best man won on the night. But when you go out there and you take a punch in the first minute of the first round of a twelve-round fight, okay, um, it happens. It happened to the great Lennox Lewis, you know, against Ratman. Has seen Ratman, uh, Ratman the King, and, uh, yeah. and uh, the, the the Rock, the Rock. Um, no, there, there's Ratman. And uh, McCall, Oliver McCall. Oliver McCall. Yeah, twice it happened to Lewis. He got caught cold, and he came back and avenged mm. avenged uh, the, uh, the, those losses. And we believe should uh, we meet Callum in the future, because um, if my guy was getting beaten up round by round in a championship fight, out box, out four, and then stopped, that's a different problem. When your guy is trained the best he has ever trained, you come out on the night, you can start exchanging fire with the other chap. And he catches. He could have gone either way, because we Frank landed a few telling shots on him, and he he withstood his one, and us hit us on top of uh, on top of the head, which it all counts. It all counts. No complaints. And he it was his day. It was his destiny. I said this to another net. I, I gave an interview uh, to. In fact, uh, it is your network. I'm not going to disrespect you, but on IFL, I gave an interview to Coogan Cassius straight after the fight in the dressing room. And I said that it was Callum Johnson's destiny to have got that uh, that victory. Guess because what? he lost his dad just before yeah. the fight. Okay. I said, we went in there with every uh, intention of winning. That's what you do. Yeah? Because we hadn't lost Frank hadn't lost a fight under me while whilst he's been with me. We hadn't lost he'd won the British title and defended it twice against all the odds when he won it. Okay? So he was unbeaten going with myself. He hadn't lost a fight. So we had every confidence, and Callum Johnson had been out for 18 months, like you said, he, he had lost his dad not too long, uh, a year or so before, 18 months before that fight, you know. Um, so when you've got all that energy and all that, you know, uh, reason. So added motivation. Yeah, you know, um, very hard people to beat. Um, so when he won, the be better man won on the night, it was his day, it was his destiny. So I said all this, and some person who's on a different network, I won't say their name, they know who they are if they listen to this. I will say it again, I'm a strong strong believer in destiny. So it's nothing wrong with me to say it was a man's destiny. He was destined to have won on that particular day against us. 
we did everything humanly possible to try and win. We didn't. Yeah? So it was the other man's destiny to have won that day. It wasn't our day to win. It was our day to win when we went into Manchester against all odds and took the title of uh, Jose, Jose Burton. Burton. Yeah, who One was an fighter that year. Fighter. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so it was Frank Bullioni's and, destiny. And he's been avoided, a lot of people are saying Absolutely. since. Absolutely. It was, uh, it, it was his destiny, Frank Bullioni's destiny to have won on that particular night. That's, again, I'm not a hypocrite. It works both ways. You're going to win, you're going to lose. You've got to be able to accept when you lose that you've done everything humanly possible to win. If you've done, you've done your best. I've, that's what I've learned over the years. So I, just, I still take losses hard. I take it hard. When I come back, you're distraught. You're, you know, down. Then you start looking deep and thinking, no, we, we did everything. We've done all the checklist preparation. My fighter, he ate well, he slept well, he done everything. We didn't cut corners, but yet again, the other man won because that's the sport where is the unknown is the unknown yeah somebody's gonna lose and you're hoping it's not you but that's the whole point you're in it somebody is gonna lose speaking of the unknown would, would you know about this unbeaten fighter that frank biglioni's fighting the chinese fighter the g is silent oh, try there again we go. there we go my italian <laughs> well, well uh, the guy he's fighting his name is fan long meng try and send that Fang Long Men. Yeah. Yeah. I've had months to practice him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's on beating. Um, he's six foot two tall, which is unusual for someone from that part of the world. And also I know that he's he was a London Olympian, two thousand and twelve. He didn't win a medal, but he, the fact that he was an Olympian is very well schooled, top pedigree, um, does all the very cultured in the sense that he, he does everything correct. Yeah, so, so we, we're interested. He's unbeaten. There's a reason why he's unbeaten. He's 14 and 0. And I believe we've got a lot of experience. Frank has a, brings a lot of experience. Um, um, again, I won't sit here and tell you we're going to Monaco to beat this unbeaten fighter. Right, well, just, just to conclude as well, uh, there was talk of. Uh... The British Boxing Board of Control ordering the fight between Callum Johnson and Joshua Boatsy. Mm. Big first news. Time, first time I've heard that. Um, Big news. I mean, when did um, that come out? Last night there was some, there was some Twitter speculation. Mm -hmm. um, if that fight goes ahead, I mean, I spoke to Joshua Boatsy. Mm -hmm. He says he just wants titles now. Mm -hmm. Just titles. I don't blame him, yeah. Um, how would you see that fight happening? Listen, that's, that's a jump. That's a jump. Yeah, it's a big, big jump. Callum Johnson is no joke. Yeah. Not because he beat us. Yeah, he's no joke, that guy. And he's got a really, really good trainer. Um, Joe Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah, he's a top trainer who's been there. Multiple world champions is trained in different weight categories. Um, the fighter is one. Is that <laughs> Callum Johnson is a fighter. Yeah, again, he's a top amateur. I believe he won Commonwealth gold, if I remember. If I'm right and saying, um, yeah, that's hmm, stylistically because I never saw that coming. So now you're it's hard for me to. If I was to, I mean, what's his top draw? Top draw, um, would, would we I'll, ever see? Uh, I'll, I'll go with the younger man, although Callum Johnson's a top, top, top draw. I'll go with the younger, hungry. I'm not saying Callum is not hungry. Regardless of what I've just said to you, I'm weighing it all up as I'm speaking to you and it starts to develop in, in my head. That's how I'm like a detective, you know, before you catch <laughs> the killer, you have to examine everything, you know, before you conclude. Um, yeah, looking at it now, how would it unfold? I'll go with a younger man, fresh. Um, and I know him firsthand. He's actually he's inflicted i owe him one yeah we're gonna one of my guys gonna meet you oh one. jordan joseph right? yes yes he beat one of my guys young young jordan joseph he beat jordan you know and um i saw a lot in, in and I've, I've been obviously seeing seeing, seeing the, what he's been doing now uh, yeah yeah now nah, i will favor although it might be a bit premature for him in terms of experience but I still, i'll still favor him to come through Right, cracking stuff. Well done. It's been a pleasure as always, and uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon. Pep Talk UK. That's uh, 
a pleasure always because you always draw certain things out of me because of the way you ask me the questions. Thank you very much. Don Charles in the building, Pep Talk UK. Like, share, comment, subscribe. The last Don, Don Charles. Peace.